Gun sales breaking records in South Carolina and across the country. Tonight in a special I-Team report, News 2's Travis Rice investigates a possible low country loophole that's fueling those record sales and why people are so up in arms. Some feel at home on the ranch. Hello. Ladies night. You do get a free t-shirt. And then just let go. At ATP gun shop in Somerville. Please set your purse oh, I just really want to get comfortable shooting a gun. You're welcome. Every woman here is being trained to use a handgun. Husband's away. He wants to make sure that I protect myself. And shoot 50 shots from revolvers and semi-automatics. It's an angry world. Safety is key and everybody gets it. But women who have never held a firearm in their lives are grouping rounds in the heads and the hearts of their targets. Ladies generally will outshoot a male. This one is a Smith & Wesson Model 10. At the other end of the store, gun sales records are being broken in scenes like this all over the country. All right, I'm going to go run your background check. I'll be right back. Call it the Mother Emanuel effect. According to the ATF, requests for background checks in South Carolina increased 25% after the church massacre from 20,000 in May and June to more than 25,000 in July, and the numbers kept climbing. 32,000 checks in November and a record 48,000 in December in the wake of the San Bernardino shootings and President Obama's executive orders. Overall, 2015 saw the second most background checks ever in South Carolina, 327,000. That's just a few thousand short of the record set in 2013. Dr. Claire Wofford, a constitutional law scholar at the College of Charleston, says people are scared. And so I think citizens feel, again, rightly or wrongly, that the federal government, particularly you can look at the actions of Obama, are going to be more restrictive on their right to own guns, and so they go out and respond to that. A fear that their Second Amendment right to bear arms will be taken away. Is it an overreaction for them to be... Be jumping to, to the gun stores? If it's motivated by the sense that if they don't buy these guns, they're never going to have access to a gun again, then that is an overreaction, yes, because the right to own a gun is not going away. Potentially the right to own certain guns or the right for certain, certain individuals to own certain guns is, I think, more subject to um, regulation than it has been in the past. While it's a hot debate in the Palmetto State, the numbers show nothing too extraordinary when it comes to actual gun ownership. South Carolina ranks 11th in the U.S. in percentage of people owning guns at just over 44 percent. Alaska is first at nearly 62 percent of its citizens strapped. And South Carolina ranks 21st in total guns per capita. It's people responding to what they see as a perceived threat. You want a bag for that? Back at the gun shop, Eric Brown knows exactly where the spike in business came from. Your total is 618.81. But admits his biggest fear is the one the law puts on him. If everything is put into the system as it's supposed to be, then yes, we, we have a great system. Again, it goes back to when we hit that muddy water of delay. That's the one that bothers me. The FBI must complete background checks within 72 hours, and Brown says there are more delays than he'd like to see. They have dropped the ball. They dropped the ball. They're not finishing their job. They want us to uphold our end. We do. It's time that they uphold their end. And gun sellers must sell to customers whose background checks aren't finished within that three-day period. Although the FBI can issue a retrieval order if the customers are later found to be prohibited from buying a gun, though it rarely happens. That one that makes everybody now question everything that's ever happened as far as a gun sale. Dylan Roof. FBI, they do their background check. They can't get a clear answer on it. After the three business days, they don't have a response. You know, well, did they really dig hard enough onto that? Or did they just, ah, I'll just throw my hands up. I'm done. Really? Because to nine people, that would have made a difference. We showed our story to the FBI, and they say local law enforcement are the ones that didn't report back quick enough in Roof's case. Moreover, if a background check isn't completed in three days, a gun dealer doesn't have to sell the gun. Ultimately, it's up to the seller if they want to go through with the sale. Reporting in studio, Travis Rice, News 2. All right, thanks, Travis. Very informative. If you have something you want investigated, contact the News 2 I-Team by emailing iteam at wcbd.com or give us a call at 843-216-4949.